Johnny Garlic over here, you're gonna take the bike after us. Yeah, put the helmet on. <laughs> no, Sam's helmet. Sam's helmet. <laughs> Alright. See you later. Bring back the really? skateboard, dude. Everybody, Norm over here, and I've got my buddy oh, yeah. Joe over here, Nick, JJ, Mark, and uh, we're playing a little show and tell. Joe brought in this guitar, Cousin Jethro. Cousin Jethro. Yeah, I, I don't think I've, I've shown you this one. It's a 1960 I bought maybe three years ago, and um, it's a transitional model because it still has a the 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 top that'll fade, you know, the, the uh -huh. summer is finished, but it has a skinnier neck. And it's, was it, oh, That's my neck. I love that neck. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing wrong with a skinny I neck. I tried to turn you on to that years ago, yeah. and then all of a sudden you, oh, you started falling in love with these thinner neck ones. Well, right? you know, the internet tells you that you got you got to love a big, fat <laughs> neck. And, and, and if, if anything that I know over the years is everything you read on the internet is true, and you Always. can believe it <laughs> wholeheartedly, yeah. regardless of your personal opinions. Thank you. So, but uh, yeah, this is, this is a nice guitar. It's a beautiful and, neck. And the story with this guitar, it's always nice when you have these photos, mm -hmm. is other than the 210 Vibe Reverb, which I don't know where it is, the original owner of the guitar is actually on drums. And he ended up being a drummer, and this was the guitar that was in the family, luckily, lucky family. And, um, and this, this guy here is, um, I believe, his cousin Jethro. So. <laughs> So I named the guitar Cousin Jethro. And All these guitars have names. Yeah, yeah and, Cousin and Jethro from Alabama. Very, very yeah. rarely, you know, does this one come out, but um, it's the one That's I kind awesome. of bang around at home and maybe for a What game. does that sound like? Uh, it, it, it sounds like, a, unfortunately, it sounds like me playing a Les Paul. Sound and Les Paul. What can I tell you? Well, a lot of times, you know, I, I sit on the couch and I and I play guitar like this. But you have to be careful because if you notice, the the jack was well, like you were yes. astute enough to give me an angled plug. But I'm lazy by nature, and sometimes I just use a regular jack. And if you get up, or you have to answer the phone, or you're in a hurry to do something, you get up and you hear that that horrible noise, and it's like the sound of a very old jack. Um, plastic, you're plastic, a man plastic, it's in plastic. demand. It's the sound of $150. Well, yeah, so, yeah, the sound of $150. Yeah. But no, this one's a nice guitar, and it's all original and and. Uh, and I bet that when you sit with a regular jacket and it makes that horrible noise, it's probably better horrible noise than you're going to get on right most of the other guitars. And that's yeah. why I have a collection of BR5 lap steels. Because <laughs> because uh, you hang them on the wall, you enjoy them, you get your Hawaii guitar on, and then when you hear that that noise and when they fall up, the, the the little jack plates fall apart, you just go over to the lap steel and pick out a brand new Hold one. Up. So, well, uh, that's beautiful. Mark Singer, the sixty three three thirty five. That's really gorgeous. Pretty cool. Our buddy JJ over here is a guitar connoisseur as well. You know, and uh, I have Nick the disease. Also. Yeah, the uh, we were just talking about red thin lines. How every, everyone seems to be in love with them right now, especially uh, you know Joe. Who was I known mean, for playing? They're that. so they're so pretty. Well, that's that, that's Albert Hall spec that guitar. That's you know, cream, that's man. that's cream. You know, and and the cream. I I've had a, a I'm lucky enough being a guitar geek. I, I actually played Eric's original sixty. I think it's a sixty three or early sixty four. And you know, one of the things about those is it is. You know, we were talking earlier that the plastic on this guitar is worth about as much as that guitar in total. Um, but blindfolded, you're going to get just as much sound out of that as you are out of this. Yeah. And one of the things you people, I know it's all about values, and this, these are PAFs, and I would assume being that's a 63, those, those are all patent numbers. Patent numbers yeah. are one and one. 
it sounds the same. Exactly. Yeah, it's well, not a sticker. Yeah. I mean, it's when they got sticker. the patent, yeah. it's a you know, sticker. Then they put a sticker on there with a the patent number. Yeah, and yeah. that little sticker adds a lot of value, you know. And, and you know, you can get Epiphone PAFs. They're the, like mini humbuckers that yeah. say PAF, and I guess those sound better. But but you know, the nylon saddles and and the patent numbers. I mean, it's like it's a that's a magical guitar, and it and it looks like it looks like that. It's gonna follow me home, and then I have to bring some other stuff in to trade you. So it's, I'm, I'm, I'm never out of we debt. We torture here. Joe when he comes in. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm never out of debt, you know. I, I always get myself into more trouble. So. Well, we have a direct deposit plan for Joe, so he just sends all his money into our bank account. And uh, yeah, or, or I, my I, wife's very happy with that. Or I Marlene. stick the envelope under the door at four o'clock in the morning. And there just it come is. In the, in the shadows, I just yeah, drive up and time. stick more. You know, and they w open up in the morning. There's a little envelope from Joe, and it's just chisels down the debt. My family's been eating well, thanks to Joe. <laughs> exactly. And I've been cruising well, by the way. I gotta always thank you, because those blues cruises are the end for me. I mean, it's absolutely the best four days of entertainment you could possibly get. And, and I thought I'd turn my phone off, but apparently. Well, you know, that we're doing two of them next year. We're doing uh, one that sails here in America, and then we're doing a European one, which you're cordially invited again. I'll be um, there. And we're, we're, you I, heard it. We're sailing out of Spain, and it's actually the same boat, um, and we're doing it twice. So we're doing one in the summertime, we're doing uh, in the, the one in the winter. So that'll be, that'll be fun. Well, it's the best entertainment you can possibly get. And uh, JJ, what kind of guitars do you have, too? Uh, I also have a 60 burst, just a little, you know, a little bit higher than that, and kind of all kinds of good stuff. Actually, the first, I was just playing my my first real real collectible uh, Gibson the other day, which that I bought when I was 19, which was a 63 Reverse Firebird 7, which is just a wonderful nice guitar. guitar. I, don't know, I have all kinds of good stuff, but I, I'm 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 particular to Gibsons and Fenders, just like most most of us, I suppose. They did them right. Yep. Yeah. Solid body electrics, and uh, I would say Muddy Waters invented electricity. That's why. That's why. That's why the the store isn't quite plated in gold yet because I don't I don't do acoustics. He's always said that. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting yeah. for him because he'll come diving through. It'll be a swan oh. dive off the high board. <laughs> And uh, and Mark over there, you know, Mark was playing this uh, really nice 335 that we had yesterday, and uh, he did the guitar of the day with it, but it got sold before he even finished. That thing sounded so great. It's a good sounding guitar, these ES guitars. You might be onto something there, Joe. Uh, actually, I bought sometimes what is my favorite guitar I bought from you, which is Ted Green's old 345. Which I was, remember that guitar. I kept I, it for many, many years. I, and I, I played all the 345s in your store, and I was like, this is clearly the winner. It's a fantastic guitar. We've been watching Ted, Freddie Ted, King all afternoon. Yeah. Since oh, yeah. yeah. Been in. But been Ted in was a legendary life. guitar player in L.A. taught everybody from Andy Summers to, uh, you know, just about every studio guitar player, you know, from Lee Rittenauer to uh, Jay Graydon, on and on and on. And everybody studied with Ted. And Ted was like one of these guys who, he would charge like about $20 for a lesson or $25 for a lesson. And if you couldn't afford it, he would charge you $10. And if you couldn't afford that, he would charge you nothing. And he was like one of the great guys. He was a very dear friend of mine. And I had that guitar from him. I was never going to sell it. But JJ came in and he said, you know, I was a student of Ted's. And, you know, I figured. I, I, unfortunately, I was not a student of Ted's. But well, you knew Ted. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but. You know, I figured it should go to somebody who knew who Ted was. And you can always you can always tell Ted Green students because you'll hear someone playing a guitar and they do the cascading harmonics, harmonics thing yeah. which he more or less invented, right? Well, actually, George Van Epps, I think, was a guy oh, did who he? did that. Yeah. You know, and Ted studied with George, and he yeah. got that, and then he kind of took it to a different level, and he had a book called Chord Chemistry, yeah. which was uh, a great book, which he hated. He called it Chord Catastrophe, <laughs> but, uh, but it was, you know, uh, a Bible for a lot of people getting into voicings. And he knew so many voicings of chords that when he played a song, you know, you could see that he was struggling, that he had 20 different places that he could have gone. And he would like, he'd always get there. If you were listening to it, it was perfect. But if you look at him, he looked like he was having a fit trying to decide which inversion he was going to use. Yeah. One, uh, one of the guitar instructors that I learned from as a kid, um, his, his advertising slogan was that he knew every chord in the chord chemistry book. 
<laughs> and one and one day because he he really he taught this very rigid type of you know syllabus and one day I just I as a kid I kind of kind of got frustrated and I just was thumbing through the chord chemistry book and I go do you know F major 9 with a 13 and a and flat, a flat 11 <laughs> and the guy as advertised when it was I don't I'm not going to play the right chord he just he, just you know, whatever he played it and I was like okay you were 20 I'll bucks. You, were, you know, it's hard to challenge a guy like that because yeah. you don't know if he's telling you if he's yeah. playing the right chord or not. Right, because I don't think anybody's ever challenged him on it. Like, hey, do you know that, you know, like, and I and I, I went like like 80 pages into the book and I was like, right. how about What's this chord? Yeah. You know? Well, Ted was yeah. the master and he taught so many people and he was like so generous with his time. And uh, you studied with yeah. him, Caesar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Arguably Caesar over here, our buddy who was a judge. It was seventeen dollars an hour when I started. <laughs> wow! And he, when he when he had to raise his rate, he was so apologetic about it. Ted, it's okay. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, now he was one of the great wow. guys, and I love Ted. And you know, unfortunately, he passed a number of years ago. He would just sit in his house in this like yoga position all day long. I guess his circulation wasn't happening. And, there's still videos of him up on YouTube and stuff, like playing at that wedding that you were yeah. at when you said. Well, no, that was my 25th wedding anniversary oh. party, and Ted played that yeah. for me, and it was it was amazingly good. Yeah, fantastic. And also, we gotta talk real quick. We lost Ed King this morning, who was oh. you know one of the great Les Paul wielding guitar players and Fenders as well, and one of the greatest riffs of all time. And I know Joe, you probably so I, I, I knew closer Ed. with him than any of us were. Oh, I, I met Ed in 1995, and I was in a band called Bloodline, and we got booked to tour with Leonard Skinner and Tesla. And by far, Ed was the kindest to me because what I didn't realize at the time was Ed was a just a big guitar geek. He lo he loved all the he loved the, all the gear. He was all about the gear. And I kind of lost touch with him for 20 years, and I reconnected with him in 2015, and in Nashville, and went over to his house, and would, we would hang. And you would not find a guy who was more excited about guitar, guitar playing, and music in general. And you know, and you you just forget he was the guy that wrote that. And you know, you know. Ed had his share of health problems, but he was a gentleman's gentleman, and he was a guitar player's guitar player. And yeah. his it's a very sad loss for the community because he really was a champion for young talent, and he really loved music and guitars, and he was a collector. And so uh, we knew Ed was sick for a while, but um, you know it doesn't change the fact that it's really sad. What a shame! Every he's, day he's it's that, so. another one these days. It there's, seems like you there's know, a sure. documentary just come out on Leonard Skinner that just just popped up this week on like HBO or something, and it shows Ed uh, in his right. studio, and he he just said he had enough in the middle of the tour. It was getting crazy. There was lot of, lots of yeah. And drinking and fighting and blah 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 and he just said you know what i i'm just done and he left right he was also in the strawberry alarm clock and that's well. right yeah, and, yeah yeah you know ed, ed had a great career and he, he was just a kind soul and yeah. and one of one of the again it's they're not making people like that and musicians like that anymore and it, it unfortunately we keep losing greats and there's just not people to replace no them anymore and, and it's just it's it's sad because I'm not sure if the community, the, you know, the music industry, is set up to nurture those kind of talents anymore. You know, a, it's 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 pretty it's pretty wacky. But but we'll miss Ed, and um, he was a member of our forum, and just a he was just a guitar key. I mean, in, in the highest order, and a legend. We know a few of those, right? That's right. This, this is your business, <laughs> guitar geeks. All right, we got We got a bail. All right, great Joe Bonamassa, JJ, Nick, Mark. And of course, myself. In a nice leather couch, by the in way. In a nice yeah. couch, yeah. We had a dog in here a little before, and Joel, on the show and tell, he wanted to show his bicycle and some sandwich that he just bought. <laughs> but we kind of skipped that. Anyhow, thank you guys for the <laughs> <laughs> Okay,